If you're in the steel or uh, iron ore business, chances are that you could be obsessing over the high prices of these two materials. Chances are that you could be wondering where the supplies of iron ore have gone. In this vlog, we'll take a close look at the supply dynamics of iron ore because this really holds the key to pricing in both of these markets. So to understand this business well, we'll have to have a look at the India production of iron ore. And as you can see, India produced 245 million tons of iron ore in the last fiscal year. You can see that Odisha was really the barometer of uh, the iron ore market, it being the largest iron ore producing state. Odisha produced 145 million tons of iron ore and this was up sharply from the previous year. Production had risen because many of the iron ore mines were coming close to the end of their mining leases. So the owners of these mines really wanted to extract the maximum amount of ore. So what really happens in Odisha state uh, has had a bearing on this market. So earlier this year, a landmark event took place in Odisha. This was the auctioning of 19 iron ore mines by the state government. This was under the new mining policy of the Indian government that sought to auction iron ore blocks as against allocation earlier. This was to bring about greater transparency and efficiency and productivity. So 19 blocks came up for auctioning and these 19 blocks had the capacity to produce 86 million tons of iron ore. 86 million tons of iron ore really is 35% of all of India's production. Little wonder then that what happened in these auctions had a role to play in the supply dynamics. So what happened in the auctions? Since these were the prime assets, more than 90 companies fell on top of each other to make aggressive bids in these auctions. So the smallest bid was went as high as 90% and the, the, the biggest one went as high as 150%. So bystanders in the industry flagged this as an event which would not be successful. They said because of the very high premiums, the owners will find it very, very tough to produce sustainably and to give the high royalty and other taxes and stay profitable. Well, five months down the line, in some ways that has really come true, at least for now. Majority of the 19 blocks are not producing, they haven't started production, barring a couple the large ones. So one is GSW Steel, which is one of the largest steel producers, which bagged four mines. And the second one is ArcelorMittal Nippon Steel India Limited. So these two companies have made some kind of a small start, whereas the others simply remain dormant because of various reasons. Now have another look at uh, Odisha's production figure. And in this bar graph, you will see that uh, the state really has the capacity to step up its production because over the last three years, it has increased its production. So if you analyze uh, last year's production of 145 million tons of iron ore that was produced in Odisha and break it down, you would see that uh, the 19 mines that were auctioned contributed 71 million tons of iron ore. The rest of the 74 million tons came from the other mines. So now people in the industry are really using this figure to say that this might be the deficit figure for iron ore this year. 71 million tons of iron ore might be absent in the market because most of those 19 iron ore mines that were auctioned have not gone into production. Look at this waterfall graph. We have taken the deficit number of 71 million tons and we have set it against the inventories. Yes, there are inventories in the system. For instance, the high grade ores are there to the tune of 20 million tons. GSPL has about 8 million tons, Sharda mines about 4 and so on, though so not all of that might land up in the market. So roughly calculated all the inventories that might land up in the market 
come to 37.5 million tons which offsets the deficit to a great extent also have a look at this production graph for iron ore you would see that in the month of april there was a very sharp plunge and production fell to a minuscule 1.5 million tons this was because of the big national lockdown that was imposed but since then production really has trickled up so the 19 iron ore mines that were auctioned have an annualized target of 48 million tons they have to compulsorily produce 80 percent of the last two years production on an average as per their mining lease so while they might be slow starters the couple of them that have moved ahead are gsw and arcelormittal and their target would be about 25 million tons so add this 25 million tons that would be coming from JSW and ArcelorMittal to the stocks of 37.5 million tons and you would find that the 71 million tons of notional deficit is offset to a large extent. To conclude, we'd say that uh, the shortage of iron ore in the market is really a temporary phenomenon and in the long run there might not be such a shortage because new supplies are likely to come in. Of course, to be sure, much of these inventories and also the new production lies in the hands of various parties and it is really up to them how much stocks they want to release in the open market. Also, to be sure, if the export markets turn very lucrative, then some of these supplies would be going overseas. Now, there's one more event which is there on the horizon. This is the likely amendment in the mining policy. So the government has directed all the ministries to take measures that would boost the employment. And in the mines ministry, they are considering making it easier for private companies to explore as well as produce mineral ores. So they are also talking about a national mineral index which uh, revamps the pricing methodology, which might make it uh, easier for companies to pay royalty it might in fact even bring down the royalty rates so these developments if they are really rolled out this year and they are implemented well then there's a chance that there might be a boost in supplies of iron ore this year itself and that could be the game changer thank you for watching